Well, hi guys, it's that time. It's our Bible teaching snippet of the day. Well, you'll notice that I'm back in my living room. I'm not completely done with all of the uh, repair work that they're doing in my home, but I am at least back in my living room. I've been living for about three weeks in my bedroom for the most part, because there's been no furniture in this part of the house. Uh, but let me get started. I want to talk to you. You know, yesterday I posted a Monday Miracle Story, and I wanted to make sure yesterday that I said that, you know, when I post Monday Miracle Story or either a Tuesday testimony, it's not necessarily a miracle, but what I do is I post it that way so people can see that it's personal experiences that I have seen, uh, whether it's a miracle or a healing, a dead raising, whatever it is, that way you know that it's not just a Bible teaching, that I'm giving you an actual account of the things that I do and the things that I have seen, okay? Uh, but I do want to go back to that from yesterday. Uh, there was a girl there at Dollar General on Saturday night. I went in there to grab a couple of things as I got out of the car. Now, I did not see the lady at first because she was sitting on the curb, okay? And there was uh, some shrubs around that, so I didn't even see her. What caught my attention was her dog walking out, you know, on the sidewalk, and I ended up getting to lay hands on her to heal her of her vision problem, as well as I got to pray for her dog, because I love animals, and, you know, I like to see healings with animals as well. Uh, so I want to go back and talk about that a little bit, and let me just start back with talking about how I told you that I like to open in prayer. Uh, now, Jesus said this when he raised Lazarus from the dead. He was, he was praying to the Father, and he says, Father, I'm praying for their benefit so that they hear me praying is really what he was saying. Did you know when I open with a prayer, okay, now I do have a thankful heart. I'm always thanking the Father for everything as I'm going down the road, as I'm waking up of the morning. But what I'm saying is it's really important that I pray for the person to hear me when I open in prayer. And watch this. Sometimes when you, when you open in prayer and you say, Father, I thank you for Susie. I thank you that it is always your will to heal and you want Susie to be healed. Okay. Or you can say, Father, I know that it is your will to heal Susie. The reason I open with that prayer most of the time is because did you know every once in a while when you ask someone if you can pray for them or lay hands on them for them to get healed, they do not know what God's will is. They, they are sitting there thinking, well, she can pray for me, but, you know, God might not want to heal me. So watch. When I say I know that it's your will to heal her, I thank you, Father, that it's always your will to heal Sometimes that is confirmation for the person to receive their healing. They needed to hear someone say, it is God's will to heal you. Okay, and that's why I call them by name. And I say, Father, I thank you that it's always your will to heal. It is your will for Susie to be healed and to be made whole. So see, sometimes when we pray that way, we build people's faith instantly because what they needed to hear was confirmation from God that it is what he wants for them, and they will receive and get healed. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is sometimes that I will close, and I'm thankful, and I'll say, Father, I thank you for Jesus. I thank you that by Jesus' beating, by his stripes, we were healed. We were healed. 2,000 years ago, and we are healed. And I say that sometimes. And now watch, sometimes I pray this as a closing prayer. And sometimes I pray the way that Jesus did at Lazarus' grave, and Jesus said, I know that you hear me, and because you hear me, I always have what I've asked for. Jesus talks about that in John chapter 11, verses 41 and 42. And there's also another scripture that I can back that up with. Let me flip to that real quick. That's John uh, chapter 11, and that's going to be 42, and I'm just going to read it real quick out of my King James. Here we go, and, and I'm just reading what Jesus said, not the whole thing. Father, I thank you that you have heard me, and I know that you hear me always, and because of the people which stand by 
I say it that they may believe that you have sent me. So see, Jesus was praying for, uh, to the Father for the purpose of the people who's standing around. But did you notice what he said? I thank you that you have heard me. And I know that because you hear me, I always have what I ask for. Okay, there's another scripture that we can go to, and that's in 1 John chapter 5. And uh, 1 John's just a little letter. Okay, John wrote three letters, uh, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. Uh, and he was the apostle John, the same one that wrote the gospel of John. But here we are in 1 John chapter 5. Verse 14 and 15, and watch this. This is just confirmation of how Jesus prayed. Now watch. It says, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have what we have asked or that we desire of him. So see, those are parallel scriptures right there. Jesus said it, it's in red, but then John, through the inspiration of Holy Spirit, reiterates that, okay? Now, the next thing I want to do is I'm going to do a Q&A, okay? And this part of the Q&A, this person asked me this. Do I have to see an immediate result or trust that it will happen later? And here's my one answer, yes. How about that? Yes, you can see immediately re results or yes, you can just trust that it'll happen later on. It works both ways, okay? Uh, I have seen where, like I was praying for a girl's knee because she, uh, was, she'd already had three surgeries, getting ready to have a fourth surgery, didn't want to have a surgery. She runs track and plays soccer. And did you know I put my hands on it and I asked her to get up and down. It still had a little click in it, so I spoke over it and again, and it still had a, you couldn't hear the click anymore, but she could feel it, so I spoke over it again. And then I took her by the hand, and we ran around in huge, a huge area of the sanctuary. Uh, yeah, and uh, it wasn't very many people there. It was only a dozen of us, so it was okay. No, no, no religious people were there to get upset that we would actually run around. But I had her running. I had her by her hand, and I told her, I said, if you can't keep up with 50, you are not healed, so come on. So, see, I had her do something immediately. And then there's other times I don't ask people to do anything immediately. You know, usually they'll tell me, oh, I feel different or I feel better. And then I explain to them that as long as you feel better now, we know that God's working. And as you go the rest of the day, you're just going to get better and better and better. So now that I've told you that, I guess as a Bible teacher, I should back that up with Scripture, shouldn't I? Okay. And you know, I always like to use Jesus as my measuring point on anything that I teach. So right now, I'm going to flip over and let's talk about Luke chapter uh, 17, verses 11 through 19. This is the account where Jesus heals the ten lepers, okay? And you'll see right here, and I guess I'm just, I'm going to try not to read too much of it because I don't want to take up the time. You can read it. I'll, I'll post it on here. Uh, but anyway, it's in verse 11. And as Jesus went on his way to Jerusalem, it, occur, it occurred that Jesus was passing along the border between Samaria and Galilee. And as he was going into one of the villages, he was met by ten lepers who stood at a distance. Lepers couldn't come close to people because it was contagious. Um, and that's why they put them outside the city, and they couldn't come into the city because it was a way of controlling uh, other people from getting sick. And they would have to go show themselves to the priest to show that their skin rash or disease or drying had stopped and that they had been cleansed. Then they could come back into the city to be around people, okay? But anyway, and they raised up their voices and called, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. Have mercy on us. Did you know that mercy is healing? Of course it is. It's all through the Bible. Yes, mercy is healing. So here we go. And it said, and by the way, mercy, mercy, guys, is giving something, uh, someone something that they didn't work for or earn. Okay? Sometimes you'll hear preachers and teachers, even I did you do that too, and there's nothing wrong with it. Mercy is giving someone something they don't deserve. Well, you know, these ten leopards didn't necessarily deserve for Jesus to heal them. They didn't earn it. 
And we've got to be careful in our Christian religion that we don't make healing a reward. Oh, I go to church and I tithe. I'm a good person, so I deserve for Jesus to heal me. But, you know, they're not believers, so they don't deserve it. And, and we may not say the words deserve, but we do sometimes think that some people deserve to be healed. Watch, I'm going to give you an example. Well, you know, Susie, she had cancer, and if anybody deserved to be healed, it was her. She was so faithful. She came to church. She cleaned the bathrooms at church, but she didn't get healed, so we don't know why God didn't heal her because she deserved it. See, we make it a rewards program. Healing is not a rewards program. Healing is God's goodness and mercy. Mercy is just giving people something they have not earned. And you can show mercy and grace all day long, as much of that as you want to, because there's no laws against that. When I give people mercy and grace, I'm withholding something they might have worked for. Watch, when you ask for mercy in a courtroom, a, a lawyer will say, uh, Your Honor, we ask for your mercy. What they're saying is, my client is guilty, and they deserve to go to jail, but would you consider going easy on them? Okay, that's another meaning of mercy. So let's keep rolling. I want to show you this. And when Jesus saw them, he said to them, Go at once and show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were cured and made clean. And then, of course, we see on down further how one of them realized he had gotten his healing. As they went, he was healed. He came back and thanked Jesus. Now, I'm going to tell you what it means down here when it says that uh, this one man was made whole, that he was restored. Our King James says, made whole. Did you know whatever, when people had leprosy, digits and stuff would fall off, like their fingers and everything. Did you know that all ten of them, the skin disease quit eating at them, okay? But the one that came back, whatever had been wrong with him before, like if his nose had a hole in it or one of his fingers had rotted off, he was completely restored to the way he was before, okay? So here we see that this healing is, wasn't instant. Jesus didn't stand there and look at him and go, okay, all ten of you, okay, you're healed, you can leave. Okay, yours is instant and yours is healed. See, Jesus didn't stand there. He just said, okay, go show yourselves to the priest. You're healed. Get out of here. And as they went, their healing manifested. Okay, the next thing I want to show you really quick, and I'm going a little long today, uh, John chapter 5, verses 5 through 9, and this is the pool of Bethesda. And this is where uh, the man's been there for 38 years. He's crippled, and Jesus asks him if he wants to be healed, and he says he can't get in the water, and Jesus tells him to pick up his mat, and the man did pick up his mat. He was, he was instantly healed, but look, he had to do something, didn't he? He picked his mat up. I bet if he laid there and said, no, nope, I'm not getting my mat up until I can feel like I can walk, he might not have got healed. Let's flip over, and I cut that one short. I really want to teach on the Pool of Bethesda because that is so messed up every time we teach it, and I would love to spend some time on that one. Mark chapter 3. This is where Jesus heals the man's withered hand. Now, in the Greek, the word hand means from here to the elbow. So we don't know how much of his arm, but it would have been at least from just his hand, his wrist, and it could have gone as far as his elbow, okay? Just so you know, a hand in the Greek can be from the elbow all the way down to the fingertips. So uh, Mark chapter 3, verses 1 through, say, 6. Uh, he heals the man on the Sabbath, but watch. The man, he said, Jesus told him, he said, reach out your hand, and when he did reach it out, his arm was instantly healed. Okay, so what we see in Scripture is sometimes healing is instant and sometimes it's progressive, okay? So I hope I answered your question there. So if you're not comfortable saying, do something and show me you're better, then don't. And if you are comfortable with saying, well, use your leg, do it. Let them use their leg. And if their leg's not working good, lay another layer on. I call it putting another layer on, just like I did with the girl with the hurt knee. So anyway, tomorrow I'm going to pick up on another question and answer it. So I love you, and I'll see you right here. Bye-bye.